guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is DeCortia and this is my girl, Monique, my colleague. We are P3 students and we are gonna be answering questions about what we wish you would have known before starting pharmacy school. Number one, remember why you're here. Stay focused because just like anywhere else, pharmacy school is like a big high school. You still have clicks, you still have mm -hmm. um, things going on, you still have drama. You have to remember why you are there. Remind yourself it every day. Still be a part of your environment because that's how you really are going to grow. But stay focused. You're here for a different reason than everybody else. Everyone has an individual journey to the same destination. So remember that and stay focused. One of the major things that I wish I knew before starting was that I was going to have zero life. That to me is major. I knew that it was gonna be hard and I wasn't going to be able to like do a lot of things, but I thought I still could like incorporate a life into pharmacy school. Right. Negative. Um, study time, classes, cramming for tests. You shouldn't cram, but I did sometimes. Um, all of that, it, it took away a lot of life. I think as we became P2s, it, it helped a lot mm -hmm. um, because we regained our life, but one year zero life zero i wish i would have known how active we have to be as far as like leadership and organizations it's in our program it is a requirement to have some form of leadership but even the programs that they don't require it it is something that is going to be beneficial to you because it is a form of networking and you want to set yourself apart from any other applicant when you graduate so starting early your first year Classes will not, they're hard when you go in, but they will not be as hard as when you progress in the program. So if you can manage doing some leadership position, being on the e-board, the hardness depends on your year of pharmacy school. And also I have to say pre-pharmacy, those prereqs to me were harder than the classes we take now. Maybe it's because it's enjoyable, it's interesting, it's able to be applied, whereas prereqs, what are we doing with that? What are we doing with calculus? What are we doing with, you know, all of physics? So now all of the courses you see in day-to-day -day life, you see it in a neighbor, in a partner, in a grandparent. So you're able to apply it and just learning about the drug formulations and, you know, what they look like, the forms they come in, the dosages. So it makes it more interesting so for me, I think pharmacy school is easier than prereqs as far as the knowledge. What makes it hard is the amount of material. It is very overwhelming. It's just, and because we're accelerated, it's just really kind of impossible to consistently do well. But again, to me, it's not hard. It's just, you have to be able to manage the load. I think that, I think pharmacy school is harder. But the okay. problem is, it's just more fun. So we don't even care that it's harder because you, like you said, you get to apply more. Like, I don't know if anybody else's family is like mine, but you know, you go to some kind of health professional school and they think you're the new doctor of the family. So everybody comes and asks me questions about their disease states, what should they take? Low key, I kind of like it because I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> like the boss. I'm gonna check my notes. <laughs> no, and I'm checking Google, but don't worry about it. But I do think that like pharmacy school is achievable. Like you can succeed with no problem. You just have to really um, figure out who you are. It, to me, I think it's a time where you really find out who you are, your study styles, um, if you really want to do this, if you're going to put in the hard work. Um, it's, it's not that, it's not that bad. Yeah. If you have good people around you, you have to have friends that are not going to be like your yes people to be like, oh yeah, you're doing amazing. No. Legit, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up because <laughs> she won't let it go. I can't let it go. I have been working one day a week, maybe two, at a job. And Decorsha is a part of my study team. And I just want you guys to know that this innocent face is not that innocent. She called me at work and I'm like, I'm so excited. I'm like, she I'm thought it was off. peaches and cream. I really did. And she <laughs> did an intervention with me and was like, you're slacking on your study and I need you to do better. And I'm like, uh, I, I did. 
So I just want you to know, like you, it's it's really big to have um, good people around you that's gonna really hold you accountable because that's really how you're gonna really achieve in, in pharmacy school. But it is fun, I must say. Like, it is fun. It is imperative that you have fun. You cannot be boring. There's so many people that are boring, that are just robots, that are teacher's pets, that is just, like you wanna make this memorable. You're never gonna be, here again hopefully hopefully you're never going to be here again. I'm really hoping. I'm really hoping. <laughs> hopefully you can <laughs> see it through and this is just a part of your experience but you want to make it memorable and have fun because it's stressful it can be hard if you mm -hmm. let it be hard it is all about you know taking it one step at a time we make jokes in lecture sometimes it's interruptive we try we to don't. whisper and be quiet we even like sit apart and we be looking at each other like <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you have to have fun and that has been the biggest thing it's okay it's not unprofessional to have fun now i'm gonna say and i don't know if i feel like the crusher agrees with this one thing that does make it hard though is our color Yes. You know, we're African American, we're um, women of color, we're women. So, I mean, it's just normal that the world kind of already sees um, our, our ethnicity plus our gender as being below. And so it's almost like, and don't get me wrong, in, the school is not racist at all. But it's something within us that we always have something to prove. Yes. We always have to make sure that even though we're going to bring up those hard discussions or, you know, maybe um, fight something that we don't agree with the school with, we have to try so hard to be politically correct so that we don't, we're not looked on as the angry black girls. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it does get hard as far as like just little things like, you know, like I said, I mean, you see me now, I have, you know, black hair. Usually I have hair color. So I already feel like people have a, you know, a preconceived notion of, okay, well, she's gonna be ghetto. So because of that, like I walk into situations extremely professional. My speech is always professional, but I'm still gonna check situations in a professional way. And I feel like I owe that to me. So again, there might be other factors that might make it seem a little harder and that's fine. Embrace those factors. Like I truly feel like on this journey, I found out who Monique really was. I was able to find out that I am not a person that's gonna sit on the sidelines and just let anything happen even if I don't agree. I'm going to address things with a solution. And not only that, I'm gonna advocate for my money because I need those coins. Yes. It, it, I mean, it's a must. It is absolutely a must. And that is one thing that I don't know why they try us, because they, they try us a lot, but we never stand for it. Representation matters, right? Mm -hmm. And not only are we both, you know, women of color, we both are moms. And a lot of people that reach out to me and they're so afraid to start pharmacy school being a mom. I have heard it all and seen it all. It is possible. Like, it is so possible. And our program is more relatable and it gives us, I don't know, a sense of like belonging. I, I wouldn't have gotten that anywhere else. I know in undergrad, I was like the only mom. <laughs> so here, I think maybe half of our class or a little more than half are moms. And there are some that work. There are some like Monique who is also married on top of having a child. There are some who have multiple children. So just seeing that I'm not the only one especially not the only black mom. You know, there's just so many, so much representation in our class and that's what pushes me that I know I'm not alone. So I'm not gonna make an excuse because no one else is making an excuse and no one better come with me with excuses because I don't wanna hear it, okay. <laughs> you know? So it's just, it is doable. You have to believe in yourself. It's gonna make you push even more and I just want to just send a little shout out to you guys. You guys are super women. We love you guys. You got this. If you have any personal questions, like anything personal that you don't want to type in the comments, you guys can reach out to me. I am more than happy to answer questions. And even Monique, she will be available too. I just want to like send encouragement. Just know that you are able to do anything that you put your mind to. If you could believe it, you could achieve it. And I say that to myself every day. Just know that nothing is impossible.
If you put your mind to it, you can do it, no matter what anybody else thinks. I wish I knew how many settings of pharmacy there were. Ooh. Yeah. During orientation week, we had to take this assessment. If I'm able to find the website, I'll put it in the description box so you guys that are in school can take it. I think it's through APHA. There's a questionnaire that you can take and I was able to see what my top five settings were out of like 60. A lot of people don't know, it's probably 60 plus settings. So my top five were long-term care, um, independent pharmacy, institutional, um, mail order, and I think compounding. You probably don't remember yours. I don't remember mine at all, but I do <laughs> remember that I felt coming into pharmacy school, say, talking about the same thing as you're saying. Definitely be open to other opportunities in other areas because I never knew. I thought it was like two, three, maybe five, you know, areas that we can get into. Mm -hmm. 60. It is Over 60. It's a lot. It I is. mean. And it's probably growing because of COVID, but I just wanted to put that out there because there's a lot of discouragement from retail pharmacists that talk about saturation, that talk about you know, awful work conditions, which there is some truth to it, but that is not your only option. And I think a lot of patients, a lot of prospective students only know about retail. There's so many other options. There's some with better pay, better benefits, better PTO, better like patient interaction. There's, if you are not a people person, you can do mail order. <laughs> you know, you like there's- You can do veterinary pharmacy. So much. I just dropped that on you. So much <laughs> government pharmacy with yeah. the, with the veterans too. You can work in a prison. There is so many aspects really to pharmacy. Is. So I just want you guys to know that because when people say pharmacy is saturated, it's their lack of knowledge that there's so many areas in need of pharmacists, but people don't even know where to look or they're afraid that they don't qualify. A pharmacist told me straight up, I'm wasting my time. You're wasting your time and money. You're never going to make money in pharmacy. It's too saturated. And I didn't listen because you're not going to tell me what I'm going to do when I know what my purpose is. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, like, don't always listen to people. I mean, their journey is not your journey and their purpose is not your purpose. So you might be that person that. I mean, you're able to go above and beyond just because of your personality. Like, I'm a big believer in what God has for me is for me. You can't tell me what my journey is because you don't know what my purpose is. Absolutely. So, at the end of the day, like, just keep going. You might fall off because uh, it's not an easy journey. Pharmacy school is not easy. Like I said, surround yourself with people that, that, that are like-minded with you, like, that are going to push you. And that's not going to hold you back because you do have, even in pharmacy school, you do have crabs in a bucket. Mm -hmm. they, they want you to succeed, but not more than them. Yes. So, I mean, even though you're a class and you want everybody to, to um, graduate, you also are an individual. And as soon as you graduate, your class is now your competition. So just make sure that even though you're not competed in a malicious way, make sure you set yourself aside. Just like the question say, get in organizations, network. You know, don't be scared to be that one student that raises their hand and asks us all the questions. We're those students. <laughs> we ask <laughs> questions. We participate. They know. They knew who we were since orientation. Like we made our presence known, and it wasn't fake. It wasn't forced. It was us genuinely taking an interest in this career that is going to set our lives on yeah. a different path. So networking is huge. You're going to need a letter of recommendation, whether it's a residency, whether it is a, a job after you graduate. These are connections that you're going to hold. And then those will be your colleagues. You know, they go from your professors to your colleagues. And those are relationships that we want to keep. Word of mouth. It's not what you know. It's who you know. It is in, a, you in know. a good way and a bad way. So... Just don't take that lightly. You know what? I do have something that I wish I knew. Okay. The importance of a mentor. Oh, we all, how do we almost forget that? I mean, that is like gold. We I have mean, we have both have great mentors. We do. And some forced. And I really am sorry. <laughs> that, I, that I had to force myself on these mentors, but <laughs> I mean, mentors, they truly are your outline 
to not only getting out of pharmacy school, but to being productive in your profession once you pass your NAPLEX. I mean, I thought I knew a whole lot and I'm a researcher. I will always research my way. And I've realized that you really sometimes are really wrong and you need a, you need that mentor to say, nah, this might be an easier way. I mean, your way might be good, mm -hmm. but again, you wanna work smart, not hard. So it's easier to go this way. You need that guidance. And if you have a good mentor that's not selfish, that's willing to um, give you all their knowledge that they have, as well as you know build up the, the weaknesses that you have into strengths, I'm telling you, you will not only succeed in pharmacy school, you will legit just be the best pharmacist out there. And that's really your goal. You wanna be one of the best. Because one of the best not only gets the best money, but they make the biggest change and leave the biggest legacies. Ooh, oh, that was a word, wasn't it? <laughs> That was a word. Picasso. Is that a, Picasso's an artist or a <laughs> painter? <laughs> Not Picasso. Okay, I want to say something else I think I knew going in, but I think a lot of students will want to know. You do not have to have pharmacy experience to get accepted. It is. De it definitely looks better because, again, that sets you apart, but you will not get denied because you have never worked in a ph pharmacy. That is what the IPPs are for, the introductory pharmacy practice experience that you will get in the program. Um, you will do better when you do have experience. More things will click and make sense. However, it does not, you know, it's not a negative connotation if you do not work. We have some colleagues in our class that haven't worked and are very smart and are doing better than some of the students who have experience. So that is something I think you guys would like to know. Oh, I always said, I mean, Monique don't have a choice because she married. I, it ain't even like I wish I knew. From what I've seen, give a break to your relationship because the endings are awful that we're witnessing, that we're hearing about, the infidelities, the stress, it has been real ghetto. <laughs> now, I'm going to add to what she's saying. She says, give a break. I'm going to tell you, identify those red flags. It is nothing like being in a program and actually seeing that. I mean, sometimes those little green eyed problems are going to come up. You're going to see jealousy within your relationships. You're going to see um, your 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 boyfriend or girlfriend not be able to not have that access to you like they used to mm -hmm. as well as you might see some other things so I mean as, and, and also it's not all bad because you might actually see the person that you're with actually show you that they got your back yes now that's rare a major thing. it's rare it, it is, now that is rare that it's is, rare now that is rare that is rare but it's it's such a breath of fresh air when you do see it now to piggyback off of what she said. Get into it. I'm going to just get into it. You got to have something to get that monkey off your back. You understand? <laughs> I didn't think I'm just, getting into Well, I'm going to get all the way in. Okay? You in pharmacy school, you're stressed. You got tests. I'm done. You got to study. You getting a little bit more tense every day. It's hard. It's, 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 it's hard. Sex alleviates a lot of stress. Protected, safe, it alleviates stress. You know, I'm not gonna tell you to go out there and just, just be on everybody. Don't pounce like a lion on everybody. She wanted me to pounce. She wanted me to get pounced on. No, I I recognized her stressful areas, and I was like, sis, it has been a while. I'm gonna need you to get that monkey off your back. You need to just release you know, See, relax. but for me, I feel like doing that is gonna put a gorilla on my back. It might, it might. Because <laughs> these men are very attached and very weird. And it's just like, I don't need that energy. I don't know. I feel like you can get the monkey off your back in other ways. Sometimes for some you just people, need your back, bro. That is true. That is very true. <laughs> so you know, you just gotta just leave it all on the bed, not on the tape. You know, or both. <laughs> this is very, this is very realistic, and I'm glad she's mentioning this because she's mentioned it to me multiple times. You guys continuously ask me in my dating who's in the picture, and I just want y'all to know to chill out, <laughs> chill on me, okay? <laughs> y'all will not even know until I'm probably engaged. By the way, you so. know. Let me give you a hint, okay? I'm just gonna give you a little hint. You know when she had. You won't know. When she's less stressed, 
and those smiles come in and she's hitting those TikToks and she's like, I'm always smiling. That's what you Monique know. Monique has not even seen me without the monkey on my back to That's know true. the difference between the monkey on my back and the monkey gone. That's the bad part. <laughs> so she won't even, so it's just like, you don't even know the difference. That's true, but. I don't think it is a difference. I, oh, I, it's a difference. I've asked my friends from back home if it's a difference. They said they can't tell. And I've tested them before without mentioning it for a while. Mm -hmm. They couldn't tell. But well, Dekorsha is not all of you. Just, just So I'm just telling you, just in case you can't tell with her, ask your friends if you can tell, if they can tell with you. You know, you might have to always keep that, you know, that energy up, you know, to be able to, and I'm not talking about coffee energy. I'm talking about sensation, <laughs> you know. It releases endorphins in your life. Endorphins make you happy. That's so done. I'm just saying. Well, she basically is saying I'm just stressed. Which I was very stressed at one point. That's the point that I was like. Do you like, still feel like I need to get the monkey off my back? I feel like you took a couple of vacations. Yeah, Maybe you I got away. That's, and that's my, the way I released the monkey. As of now. I do believe that even though her stress level has dropped a little bit. <laughs> I think to get that to the full, you know, initial state at zero. You know. I think what it is, she's so nosy, y'all. I am. She just can't wait to see the difference in me. If there is one, she can't wait to see. You can't wait to see how I am. I mean, realistically, I want to see my friend walk in here bowleg. <laughs> I want to see them legs turn different. That's what I want to see, you know? This is fine. This is cool. Okay? I in case she's in pain after I have the ibuprofen. <laughs> Well, in Monique's words, see, listen, I feel like I'm less stressed because I'm not dealing with anyone, but I do understand what she's saying too. So again, know yourself, <laughs> know what you need and know the, the way you need to get the monkey off your back. Mine's is vacations. Some people, it is sex. Um, and sometimes in pharmacy school, there's people who just don't have the energy to even perform or to have sex and then That's their true. partner's cheating or... You know, that's a whole nother thing as far as relationships in a program. So just be prepared for that to take a, a turn for the better or the worse. You will find out if this partner is going to be your partner after the program for you sure. You definitely will. So good or bad, you will find out. You will find out. So let us know what questions you guys have in the comments. What is one thing that we mentioned that you wish you would have known that you had no idea about? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I'm so fucking done with you. <laughs>